everybody, I'm Eugene Driscoll of ValleyIndy.org. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indy podcast. The Valley Indy is a nonprofit online newspaper covering Ansonia, Derby, and Seymour in the great state of Connecticut, specifically the lower Naugatuck Valley. You can visit us on the web at ValleyIndy.org. Wow, it has been a busy couple of news weeks here in the lower Naugatuck Valley. Uh, this podcast, this episode, I'm going to be playing some clips from a recent Seymour Board of Education meeting during which the school superintendent, Superintendent Susan Compton, revealed to the public that the school budget, the current school budget, has a deficit of about $839,000. That is attributable to a, quote, miscalculation of fringe benefits, unquote, made during the budget formation process last year by, according to the superintendent, the former business manager. This was uncovered by an internal audit. And the problem it creates, based on what was said at this public meeting, if you followed the Seymour budget process for years now, the Valley Indy launched in 2009, Seymour voters and the town itself, I think it's okay to say or accurate to say that they're very conservative with their education dollars. There are never big year-to-year percent increases, budget uh, increases in that Seymour education budget. So if you have a lean budget and you have an $800,000 hole in it, that can obviously create challenges. But I don't want to react in any way. That's, of course, not my job. My job here is just to provide you with the information as it was relayed to the public during a recent Board of Education meeting. This was a two-hour meeting, so I am I edited down the clips to the parts that pertain to this budget deficit discussion. For more information, you should definitely visit the Seymour Public Schools website. You should go to the Seymour Board of Education on YouTube if you want to watch the entire video. I believe it took place uh, this Monday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, January 26th. And there will be more information in a story on valleyindy.org about the Seymour Board of Education budget deficit. So without further ado, here is the discussion that was held the other night in front of the Seymour Board of Education. You're going to hear the superintendent, Susan Compton. Then you're going to hear a business manager. His name is Salvatore Bucci, or Busey. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your last name. And then in the second clip, you're going to hear Board of Education member Jim Garofalo, sort of react to this situation, what it means in the big picture. Seymour budget, by the way, usually goes to voters. It's a lengthy process, usually goes to voters uh, in the spring. So a lot remains to be seen. Thank you. Um, Again, economic development is crucial to a town, but the quality of the education system is right there with it. So now I must tell you the story of what we have uncovered, which most of you know individually. Now I want to bring it out in the public. At this time, I must publicly share that we had a deficit situation in an area in which there were miscalculations of fringe benefits, and it involved the uh, configuration of figuring Anthem insurance costs as well as with MRF, which is a retirement. And this came from last year's budget, and it was in an estimated amount of around $800,000. I think more specifically it was 839 yes. So, and this was done by a former business manager who did last year's budget for this current year of 2021-22. Please understand that this was uncovered by our new business manager in doing an internal audit of the accounts and budgets. And understand as well, I did talk with our former business consultant. He was aware, he did feel like he knew there was a 700, at least $700,000 deficit in, in regards to fringe benefits, but he didn't go forth with it. I just want you to know this is something that we can fix and we have to move forward. Uh, you as a board of education, you had no idea that this was going on. You didn't know until we told you. <coughs> 
I didn't know until he shared with me. I suspected something was wrong because at many meetings, the business consultant would always mention $700,000. So here's where we are. Just looking at employee benefits, this represents a 2.2% of the 3.6 increase for the new year. So what we're saying, it's called catch up. Catching up from the past of this past year and then moving forward planning for this year. The remaining increase is a result of a projected increase of 12% in health insurance benefits with Anthem. And this is for about any place you'll go in Connecticut with certain insurance companies, you're seeing the premiums go up. So if it was just this FY budget alone, it would be 4.5% we would go in asking for. And all of this is addressed on the very first page in this document, and now Mr. Salvatore Bucci will go into more detail. I just want you to just, you know, as, as we review all of this, He's going to come tonight and say a certain percentage to Acetown. We do have, we will present next Monday night, okay, one, one plan and other two backup proposals. And I just want to share that with you. When you get into budget cuts, any place would tell you when you get into click, really very serious cuts, you look at attrition, but you don't hurt programs as less as possible. So this is where we are. This is the true facts. We've always put everything on the table. That's who Seymour is. And you just had a person who just made a serious mistake. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. We move forward. Thank you. Okay, so that was, again, Seymour School Superintendent Susan Compton. And then speaking after her is the new business manager, Salvatore Bucci. Um, on the first page of the budget summary, um, I'd like to um, dovetail off of what Dr. Compton showed in the um, history of budget increases. This problem really seemed to manifest itself in the 2021 year when there was a 1.5% increase in the overall budget, but there was a 2.1% increase in the actual spending. And then for this year, is a 2% increase in this year's budget, but we're running at a 4.3% increase based on our actual expenditures. For next year, we're looking at essentially what is a 6.9% increase in the budget, of which only 4.5% would actually get spent next year. The other 2.3%, which is the 800,000 change, represents the correction that we have to Phil, and what I mean by the correction we have to fill is this whole issue relates to employee benefits. Employee benefits, if you take $800,000 of a problem we're dealing with this year, and then you add 12% increase in health insurance premiums, which we're estimating, and the town is also estimating the same percentage because we're both on the same policy, you wind up adding another $400,000 to your overall costs, you wind up at a $1.2 million problem, and your $1.2 million problem essentially makes up a 2.3% of your overall increase just to get you current so you can make your premium payments. The keys to the 4.5% increase are a new teacher contract under which salaries essentially increased across the board between 3 and 3.5% depending on um, the step and grade. Now, the great news is we have a lot of experienced teachers, but they also happen to be at the very high end of the step scale and at the very high end of the salary scale. The second component to this is largely a 12% increase in employee benefits. This district has roughly $23 million worth of underlying salaries. We have $7 million in employee benefits, fringe and taxes on top of that. Out of this $37 million ask, almost $30 million of it is our personnel. So when you look at what the crux of the budget is and you start looking in areas of discretionary spending, we have very little. We have essentially in this budget on top of $30 million, $2 million for um, 
a bus contract which has to be renewed, which essentially in this budget is flat. You have another $2 million in there roughly for special education. You have a million dollars in there for more or less for um, utilities. Now you just add another five million on top of your 30 million, you're at 35 million, so what's your discretionary spending? Two million dollars. It's very hard to find meaningful money when you only have two million dollars to work with, which by the way includes instructional books, um, technical supplies, other things you need to advance the educational mission. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> really what it comes down to is how painful is it going to be to be able to come within a number that um, essentially is less than 6.9%. Okay, so that, again, was the, the business manager of the Seymour School District talking there. I apologize. That's a lot of numbers. I know that's a lot to digest, but basically he's saying that teacher salaries are going up, our staff costs are going up, our health insurance benefits is going up. I believe he said double digit. And then on top of all that, there is a mistake uh, of some kind, a miscalculation to the tune of $839,000. So at this point, very early in the budget process, but at this point, Seymour Schools is saying or looking at a possible 6.9% uh, funding increase from the town. That's what they're asking the town to fund at this point. That could very well change, and this is only the first meeting, so uh, it's only January. There is some time. The budget vote is usually in May, I want to say, April or May in Seymour. Okay, now I'm going to skip ahead. Bear with me while I find this on YouTube. It's when board member Jim Garofalo speaks up uh, and just provides sort of a general commentary on the situation as a whole. Okay, 40 foots at 4436. Let's see if this works. We need to overcome. Insofar as any school budget is concerned. Number one starts here. We have to approve it. Then it goes to the Board of Finance. Hurdle number two. They have a chance to wiggle at it. And if they do, then uh, we have to come back and take another look and make some very difficult decisions. Hurdle number three, the town itself, the, town, the Board of Selectmen and the select women have to be satisfied that the town, let's say, tenor, of the town is acceptable to a valid, and I'm going to use quotes around that, Board of Education budget. The fourth and final hurdle, the largest, the most difficult, are the voters. Yes. We go through this on an eternal basis. We never know whether it's going to be feast, famine, or absolute starvation. And then we have to take and make the cuts that really destroy any system when they cannot receive what is necessary to provide the education for all the students. We don't generate money, just as the federal government doesn't generate. But the federal government, there's a big difference here. They can reach into every one of our pockets and take what they need. And we can moan and groan, but we can't do very much about it. Nor can we do very much about a town that is unwilling to sustain the educational needs of its community. I see, I, I, I may be taking more time than I should, but I see given the current circumstances, given the inflation that's you hear about it every day. And that is hitting people, in yes. Seymour particularly. Absolutely. I so, agree. So it becomes increasingly more difficult to convince people, look, you have to toughen up. You have to bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. You have to go forward regardless of whatever pain it may mean to you personally. That's not a good selling point. And if, if I were to read the temper of this town, I would say they tell me to go take a hike. 
or they tell all of us, go take a hike. I'm not going to support that budget. So, given, yes, there are grant monies out there, yes, we can let people go, we can reduce staff, we can reduce programs and so forth and so on. But in the final analysis, we are subject to the community whims and there isn't much anybody's going to do for us. Once that vote is made, we've gone through numerous votes on the budget. Sometimes we were lucky, and other times we were not. So I'm fearful. I'm expressing my solitary opinion <coughs> as a member of this board. I'm very concerned. I'm very attuned to the two parents who have spoken about the special ed budget. I don't know what we're going to do. I know. And you know, I, I listen and I value your judgment and guidance very much. And as you all have expressed to me, the process with this budget, even as I was taking this job, what all that is involved. And it's in, in regard to this process. And, and I totally think what you've said, that we're, we're in for a very tough situation. And it may be back to the situation that it may be just bare bones of what we're dealing with. Okay, so yeah, again, I just wanted to provide some snippets from that meeting. Again, that is a two hour meeting. I don't know why I said again, but I just wanted to give you a, a sense of, of the conversation in, in a concise matter. So I just pulled about 10 minutes worth of audio clips of the Seymour Board of Ed discussing with their superintendent the discovery of an $800,000 approximately uh, hole in the current budget that will create some challenges as the school district readies up a new budget, which goes to the Board of Finance and then possibly back to the school board for trimming possibly, and then to the Board of Selectmen and then goes out to public vote because in Seymour, ultimately the voters decide yay or nay on the town and school budgets. So, and again, if you're just hearing this on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast, go to valleyindy.org and search Seymour School Budget for more information on this very subject. All right, thank you so much.